Hi, I'm Mike Barsick. I'm with South Face, and we've created this video to support walkthrough inspections of the Georgia Energy Code. Uh, homes being built under this code uh, reference the 2015 IECC along with Georgia supplements and amendments. To begin, uh, please note that the 2020 Georgia amendments replace the Table 402.411 in the IECC with the first page of Appendix RA of the Georgia Supplements and Amendments. It's important to recall that both air sealing and insulation are mandatory requirements of the Energy Code. And mandatory means they cannot be traded off and they must be done. The remaining 20 or so pages in Appendix RA are graphics. Uh, and these are intended to help demonstrate ways and examples of air sealing and insulation. Please note these details are not necessarily the only way to air seal and insulate. We're going to focus on a certain window in time in terms of construction schedule, the pre-drywall inspection. At this point, hopefully all air sealing that will be covered with drywall has been completed correctly and all insulation has been installed properly. We have example footage from two different projects. One is a gut renovation. The second is a newly constructed addition, and both help illustrate blocking, air sealing, and insulation details of the code. As a final note, please be aware that certain products like rigid insulation foam board and spray polyurethane foam can serve as both an air barrier and insulation. We'll begin with blocking sealing off large holes and openings. Examples include capping chases, tub penetrations through insulated floors, and blocking at cantilevered floors over outside air and unconditioned spaces. Here we see a, a challenge for this particular home in that the bathtub has been set against an exterior insulated wall before the insulation and air barrier has been installed. Here you can see the hole through the floor which will be insulated and the penetration is too large to use spray foam alone, so it must be blocked first. To air seal the rough opening of the tub penetration through an insulated floor, first some form of blocking is cut, in this case foam board, and attached to the rough opening. And then can foam is used to spray against and seal the tub drain penetration completely. Here we see kind of a classic leak path, which is a second floor condition floor, which is cantilevered over, in this case, an outside air, open air porch. And there's no blocking in here. And without blocking, you can see all the daylight that, that is coming through at this moment. And what we need to see is blocking that's done with either wood or foam that's rough cut into the opening and then sealed with spray foam. Here we see a large chase which has not been capped and then ducts were run through that location. And this will be very challenging to air seal because of the irregular shapes. What's preferred is for the chase to be capped, the holes cut the right size for the ducts and run through and then additional sealing done with spray foam. Because this is a flue pipe, we need to use the right kind of sealant, fire block, fire, uh, intumescent, and you can see where it's been done right here. Uh, the red caulk, as you can see it right there, and I'm gonna climb up and use it on spaces like this as well. The next portion shows smaller air sealing details that can usually be done with caulk, foam, or gasketing materials. Here, because the gap is so large, I'm installing foam with the high expansion red can, uh, being careful not to overfill the void and bow the door. Either, either can would work in this instance. Here you see a door in a rough opening and the proper blue can of spray foam is used, it's low expansion, to fill the void. Here's a plumbing stack penetration being foamed. Here's another 
plumbing stack penetration being protected by a, f a metal plate. Here you see a closed dryer uh, exhaust penetration and a pretty big rough opening, but not too big for spray foam if you layer it carefully. Here we see a plumbing wall and a number of penetrations and the plumbing stack through the top plate that has a protective uh, metal plate in front of it. It's being sealed into its rough opening. If this is a flat ceiling, which it isn't, but if it was an, a flat ceiling, that's an example of a hole that was not used and was filled with foam. And also, again, if, if it was a flat ceiling, uh, there's a gas line penetration. And just to show a different material being used, here we're using a, uh, a caulk as the sealant instead of foam. And either is perfectly acceptable for this application. Here we see the water supply line for a toilet being sealed with caulk in its penetration, as well as the toilet drain line. The gap is small, so caulk is being used as the sealant. Anytime you run a bead of caulk, you should always squish it in. And then the gap on the other side of the drain line is a little bit large. So for that, pen that side, I'm going to switch sealant and use spray foam, which will expand to fit the opening. Here we see a large glass door that's been installed in its rough opening and sealed properly with low expanding foam. Bottom plates may be air sealed to the slab or subfloor using caulk, adhesive, or a gasketing material. To seal the bottom plate to the subfloor or to the slab, we'll use either a gasketing material, of course it has to be installed during construction, or you can run a bead of caulk along the inside edge of the bottom plate. Here you can see caulk being added at the gap between the subfloor and the bottom plate. Can lights in an insulated ceiling need to be airtight and IC rated. This is not compliant. This is the right light fixture. Cavities within corners and headers of frame wall shall be insulated. There are a number of ways to frame an in an insulation friendly manner, but the standard three stud corner with gaps will not pass code without time consuming drilling and filling the cavities between the blocking. One simple method is to simply turn the third stud, which allows for an opening to install the insulation behind the stud. Another approach for two stud corners as well as T walls is to use a ladder approach, which allows for insulation to be to be installed behind the framing. So here's a intersecting T wall that's been framed with a ladder approach. And the ladder provides a stop for the drywall and allows the T wall to be uh, nailed to it. We're gonna install an insulating bat in that gap behind that space. It's been cut to the right width, has to be pressed a little bit where the blocking is, but essentially that insulation will fully fill the cavity and allow us to get complete coverage. Here we see an example of a poorly installed fiberglass bat. This one has a paper face. There's a gap at the top. The paper face has been inset step stapled too far, more than an inch. There's compression where the electrical wires are shown running through the wall. The bat has not been split behind or slit for the wiring. And there's also compression of the fiberglass at the bottom. So void at the top, compression at the bottom. Here we see the proper installation of a fiberglass bat, in this case, a faced fiberglass bat. Uh, the craft paper facing is stapled, in this case, on the edge, but it's not stapled in very much. There's no gap at the top. The insulation fully fills the cavity. And as we slide on down, we can see the uh, paper facing could be stapled or 
uh, to the inside edge or face stapled to the face of the stud. The point is the insulation fully fills the cavity. As we slide on down to the horizontal electrical wire, in this case we've chosen to slit the bat. You can either slit it or you can peel the bat and put half in the front, half in the back of the wiring, whichever is your preference. The main point is the insulation uh, is not compressed because of the presence of the horizontal wiring. And then towards the bottom, there's an electrical box. We're gonna notch out, take that piece of fiberglass and tuck it behind the insulation, the, behind the, the electrical box. Uh, the paper is not all that critical, but we'll go ahead and, and uh, staple it in place. Here's a gas valve. We'll cut an opening in that through the insulation, tuck it around it, as well as notch the paper out. At the end of the day, this bat fully fills the cavity. It's neat and the insulation coverage is complete. This wall cavity has a gas line running to it. You can see the bat has been split uh, to allow the fiberglass to completely surround the pipe. Here's a wall cavity that's been insulated with an unfaced bat, and you can see the insulation has been slit properly around the electrical wires, notched around the box for electrical and gas line, and basically the bat completely and neatly fills the cavity without any compression. For a description of proper insulation installation, refer to the 2020 Georgia Supplements and Amendments, Appendix RA. Here, you can read a specification for the two main criteria that affect insulation performance, voids and gaps, and compression or incomplete fill. To summarize quickly, voids, gaps, or basically locations where there's no insulation at all in the insulation coverage must be less than 1% of the insulated surface area. Likewise, for compression or incomplete fill, the under-insulated area must be less than 2% of the overall insulated surface, and the amount or depth of any compression or incomplete fill must be less than one inch. And finally, while you're inspecting at this stage of construction, the NFRC window performance labels are generally installed, and this is a good time to do a quick check for compliance. If all windows show a U factor of 0.35 or less, and all windows show a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.27 or less, the windows are good to go. Please note that technically, a weighted average of all windows needs to comply. So that if one or two windows are a little worse than code, it's probably okay provided the majority of the windows are slightly better than code. A simple weighted average calculator can help show this. We hope this video has been helpful. Uh, to conclude, it's, it's not trying to show every aspect of the energy code, but certain elements that you're likely to encounter at this stage of construction.